Hey guys, it's G. So these are the colors we're using today. Um, Brilliant Blue from Amsterdam, Azo Orange and Primary Yellow from Art Creations and Titanium White from De La Grande. We're gonna be doing a swipe today. Um, I will post the recipe at the end of the video, so hang tight and uh, just check this out in the meantime. Uh, I'm gonna start with the yellow. I want, I, I what I usually end up with in a swipe is the darkest color if you put it in the same quantity as all the other colors, will tend to sort of cover everything up the closer you are to the swipe color. So I'm purposefully trying to avoid um, the orange or the blue overtaking this painting. Um, so I'm starting with the yellow and white to make sure the majority of the canvas is those two colors. Um, I'm using one of those spoon slash fork uh, things. Uh, I find they're very good at spreading paint around um, just like a comb would be, the spaces between the prongs uh, make it so that the paint can self-level pretty easily. So here we go. I'm adding the um, Azo Orange at the top. Um, and none of these paints at this stage have any uh, additives in them. This is just um, the float roll and the paint. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a couple of drops of silicone to the brilliant blue and use that as my swipe color. Okay, so as I'm sure you've heard me say before, you never want um, your silicone oil to directly touch the canvas. So if you're putting the silicone oil in the colors and not the swipe color, uh, you would want to use a layer of paint uh, called the base below that. If you're not putting silicone in the colors and you're putting it in the color that you will swipe with, as I am right here, you don't really need that base, okay? Because the color, the blue that has the silicone in it is not touching the canvas directly, okay? So what I'm doing at the top and to make sure I have nice even sides is I put the blue down on top of the orange and I let it slide off the top, okay? The top edge, mind you, I'm, I'm sitting on the left side of the frame. So I'm using printer paper here because um, it just hold it's firm. I find it's been working better for me than tissue. And you'll notice, unlike float roll, the usual when you do uh, a swipe with float roll, um, the canvas didn't necessarily get covered in cells. Um, this is by design. I thickened up the recipe a little so I could control where I want the cells. So <clears throat> those droplets that happened to be near the surface sort of already gave like an arch-like pattern. So what I decided to do is I'm going to use my little kitchen torch. It's a um, butane torch, sort of like what you would use um, for something like a creme brulee, for example. On its lowest setting, so you can get pretty close to the paint, Think about painting with the torch, so like you're creating a pattern with the cells. You see how the cells are popping up in the same place as I'm moving my hand, sort of creating like a little arch. Yeah, so that's kind of an interesting way to compose with cells instead of having cells completely overtake the composition. I kind of wish I stopped here. I do like this little either three pronged arch if you're looking at it from one direction or it even looks like a tree branch sticking up. It's kind of cool, but I, I hit it with the torch a couple more times. So I got a slightly different composition. Uh, you'll see now it fills in a little bit of the gaps. And yeah, and it's easier to do that if you thicken your recipe. Um, float roll, honestly, it helps uh, cells come to the surface pretty easily without the need for a torch. Um, in Egypt, when I use varnish, it's much easier to control where the cells go. So let's give this a quick close up. Nice crisp cells. The thicker the recipe, um, the more control and crisp cells you will get. It gets wobblier and wonkier, the thinner the recipe gets. So thanks for watching. Here's the recipe. I hope you try this and let me know how it works. This was G and I'll see you in the next video.